Iraq, led by dictator Saddam Hussein, declared war on Iran, led by Ayatollah Khomeini in 1980, over a waterway between the Tigris and the Euphrates River, which was Iraq's only access to the Persian Gulf. The Iranian dictator was Ayatollah Khomeini, and in Iraq it was Saddam Hussein. The U.S. supported Iraq during the Iran-Iraq War from 1980 to 1988. The U.S. supported Iraq during the Iran-Iraq War in which it fought against post-revolutionary Iran with several billions of dollars worth of economic aid, sales of technology and train. However, the U.S. did not directly supply arms to Iraq. At the time of Iraq's invasion of Iran, the U.S. president was the Democrat Jimmy Carter. The U.S. supported Iraq in the Iran-Iraq War because in 1980, Ayatollah Khomeini of Iran still had 52 U.S. citizens kidnapped in Tehran from the U.S. Embassy. After eight years of war without a winner and over one million deaths on each side, a peace agreement was made between Iran and Iraq in 1988. In 1990, during George H. Bush's presidency, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait after the Iran-Iraq War. Kuwait had supported Saddam Hussein during the Iran-Iraq War, and they lent money to Iraq for the war. But after that war, Saddam Hussein demanded that Kuwait forgive the debt as Iraq had avoided a possible Iranian invasion on Kuwait. Kuwait demanded that Iraq repay the loan. This caused Saddam Hussein to start a war on Kuwait and he invaded the country in two days and took their oil fields. Iraq's invasion on Kuwait for oil in 1990. George H. Bush put economic sanctions on Iraq because of the invasion on Kuwait. U.S. President George H. Bush put economic sanctions on Saddam Hussein of Iraq and threatened the war against Iraq if he didn't withdraw all Iraqi troops from Kuwait. In January 1991, a coalition led by the U.S. started a war on Iraq called Operation Desert Storm. On February 27th, Saddam ordered a retreat from Kuwait. President George H. Bush declared an Iraqi withdrawal from Kuwait. Before the Iraqis withdrew from Kuwait, they burned 700 oil fields in Kuwait with 1 billion barrels of oil valued at $20 billion in today's value.
Al Qaeda, led by Osama bin Laden, hijacked four U.S. airline planes and attacked the twin towers of New York, the Pentagon, and Arlington, and Pennsylvania on September 11, 2001. Osama bin Laden George W. Bush's attack on Iraq After September 11, 2001 terrorist attack on the USA by Al-Qaeda, U.S. President George W. Bush accused Saddam Hussein of harboring Al-Qaeda terrorists in Iraq and also of making weapons of mass destruction, WMD, and therefore the U.S. invaded Iraq in 2003 looking for those WMDs, but they never found them. U.S. bombards Baghdad, Iraq capital, waiting for Saddam Hussein's surrender. Saddam Hussein was captured and executed by Iraq rebels in December 2003. The U.S. troops that invaded Iraq in 2003 didn't find weapons of mass destruction nor Osama bin Laden. George W. Bush's attack on Iraq After September 11, 2001 terrorist attack on the USA by Al-Qaeda, U.S. President George W. Bush accused Saddam Hussein of harboring Al-Qaeda terrorists in Iraq and also of making weapons of mass destruction, WMD. And therefore, the U.S. invaded Iraq in 2003 looking for those weapons of mass destruction, but they never found them. Saddam Hussein fled from the presidency and was hiding. He was captured in December 2003 by Iraqi rebels and opposers to his cruel and brutal dictation, and they hung him to death. 